in sat when they when they first get the grip down they understand technique they've got their pad and sticks in hand what are the first steps you take them through okay so the the first rudiment that we would normally teach uh, young beginners <coughs> um, is called the mummy daddy we had a good laugh up at less at lunchtime because these guys had never really they never really heard of this it's Hello. really the doubles double strokes so it's two two strokes on the right two strokes on the left and we want to get each stroke exactly the same sound so the same the same height the same volume and the same speed now the reason we call it the mommy daddy is really because that's how it sounds if you were to say it as you play it it would go something like this The faster you go, the harder it is to say, and I'm not prepared to <laughs> go that fast today. But uh, that's the double strokes. Now, whenever I whenever I started drumming, I was always told that is the the single most important rudiment that that you learn, the most difficult, the hardest to perfect. I thought there's n there's no way that can be the case. That's simple. It's just right, right, left, left. But it's a case of um, when you look back in months to come, when you're struggling to learn other rudiments, you realise that the crux of the problem is it's a, the double hasn't been perfected. Uh, and you'll you'll see. I'll demonstrate a bunch of rudiments now that uh, that have doubles in them, and how it evolves quite quickly uh, without even without you even realizing. So the second rudiment is something you learn on the kit as well, is the paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Now I'm not sure what way you learn it on the kit. Do you learn it with an accent? Or do you learn it with no accent and then incorporate accents in? For me, I mean, I learned without at first and then, and then the idea of accents came in and then we moved the accents. And I mean, there's a lot of interpretations, obviously. Yeah, but well, especially in your world. My yeah, my dad first started me, and he taught me the paradiddle with an accent on the first note, which is much easier than playing it without an accent. So whenever I got my first proper teacher, he encouraged me to play with no accents, and that was really quite difficult. So I would recommend you, anyone as a beginner in, in this, uh, this form of drumming, to play all the exercises without accents. Because if you can do that, adding the accent in is much easier than, than trying to take it out. <laughs> Makes um, sense, never thought about that. So, same idea as the mummy daddy. Every note has to be the same volume. Keep your sticks the same height and the same speed. <laughs> so we get right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. Now, it's also worth noting that my stick grip is the same as I just described it at the start of this lesson. Try, it's really, it's really quite important that you're always conscious of the shape of your hands. Try not to change the shape of your hands depending on what you're playing. This should be the, the staple shape and position of your hands all the time. And then try and use that as much as possible to, to get a nice flowing, a nice flowing feeling to your plan. So paradiddles, one more time. So you'll notice the double in there. Yeah, that's just a continuation on, on of the, the double stroke, or the mummy daddy as we call it. Um, what we normally teach is triplets, which is just what they say they are, groups of three. Different ways you can, different ways you can uh, play triplets. A good one for f some finger control and thumb control is all on the one hand. 
So you get incorporate that into any of the drum scores that we play with the pipes. Most of our regular triplets are just hand to hand. And it's always a connecting movement. Um, it's always kind of taking you into something, uh, into a new phrase or out of a phrase, um, which is quite hard to, it's quite hard to describe at, at this stage. Um, the other rudiment that is very common in the in the Scottish drumming is the flam. Now, I've had some quite interesting conversations about flams with Jason because obviously you can play flams on the kit, um, but you know the level of precision that we look for on the on the snare drum is is often much greater than it is on the kit. Of course. Just because of the tuning alone. Uh, because the, the, the tuning of this drum is so high pitched that you can hear absolutely every single note. So it, it's really quite important that when you play the flam, which is two notes played at almost the same time. So you have a high hand and a low hand, and we're going to play them at the same time. So which one should get to the drum first? That's what I always ask my beginners. They always say the high hand for some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so the low hand, it has the head start. And it's only a millisecond difference. So we get this sound. I always tell them it's a plop sound. It's like dropping a stone into a bucket of water. It hits the water, it goes plop. Same thing on the flam. <coughs> Left flam. Left hand's high, right hand's low, and the right hand will get there first. Now if I demonstrate, if I demonstrate a badly executed flam, you should remember this sound because it's horrible. It'll sound like this. So that's a really bad flam sound. <laughs> That sound kind of scares me a little bit. <laughs> Good flam. Now, what I said earlier about the triplet connecting movements, um, if we play a triplet onto a flam, it'll sound like this. Vice versa. Okay. Very cool. Should we touch on rolls quickly? Let's touch on rolls, yeah. Okay, so every drum kit player that I've ever spoken to has always asked me, how do you play the Scottish pipe band roll? Um, and that's, it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult rudiment to explain. But basically, in short, uh, it's what we, we call a buzz sound. To, to create a buzz sound, it's everything you don't do to create a tap sound. So to play a tap, the stick has to make contact and rebound to create that clean sound. A buzz sound, we want to put a little bit of pressure on our stick and push into the, the playing surface of the drum or the pad to create this sound. It's a fuzzy sound. Now we're not pushing we're not pushing in hard. It's just enough to get a fuzzy buzz sound. Now everyone's, the, the pressure that everyone has to put on the stick will be a little bit different because everyone's hands are different sizes. Some people are stronger than others. Um, 
it's a very personal thing, and we always uh, we always encourage drummers that the role, your role quality, is a very personal attribute of your plan. The left buzz comes from, and this brings me back to what I explained about the technique at the very beginning. It's important that you use all three components of the hand again. So we get an even buzz sound. So we're not just using our thumb. If we just use our thumb, we get this sound. It's very hard to control the pressure. Same if we pull our ring finger too far in. We want the shape of our hand to stay in position all the time. Now, the buzz sound, if you join it up, you ideally want to make, make it as smooth a sound as possible. It should sound like tearing a sheet of newspaper because it's the only way we have on the snare drum to sustain a note. Uh, it's the only sustained sound we have. So we basically want each buzz to blend into the other as much as possible. So you get a really dense, continuous, smooth sound. So if I start slow, and I'll bring my hands down until you can hear the roll start to, start to even out. my hands too high so it's really important that you find the height which isn't it's not very far off the playing surface you want to try and keep your hands as low as possible to get that closed buzzy roll sound probably the most unique sound of the scottish drums i would say i would say so yeah. too yeah yeah definitely so flams talked about rolls paradiddles the mummy daddy, which I love. Yeah. Um, beyond just practicing them individually, is there any kind of like um, pattern or exercise that you would give students or something that uh, strings some of those together that you can teach or show <coughs> Yeah, Maybe just one? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, once you've learned mummy daddy, paradiddle, triplet, and flam, you, you, can, you can put the, the three of those together, four of those together, sorry, um, and it's two groups of each. So it goes, Mummy, Daddy, Mummy, Daddy, Paradiddle, Paradiddle, Triple, Triple, That's the best way to the best way to do it. Now, cool. Even though I'm saying triple, triple, flam, flam, they're not really triplets because they're they're in sixteenth notes. Mm -hmm. But to a beginner, triplet is a group of three. And that gets them playing. I think that's okay. I, I try not yeah. to baffle baffle people too much with the theory too early. I would rather just get them get them playing, get their hands into the shape that they need to be in, um, and then we can introduce the, the theory of it later. So I'll play that for you one more time. Remember, two groups of each each rhythm that we've learned so far. Very cool. Gives you guys a little bit of an understanding as to where to start. Um, 